board that train was Beth Davids. She is in the hospital now and she is with us by phone telling us about what can only be described as a harrowing ordeal. And Beth, you told me moments ago that you mm -hmm. asked yourself as the train car in which you were traveling began to turn over on its side in the dark of night, the thought that ran through your mind was, is this going to be it? I mean, that's got to be what you're thinking. Yeah. Am I about to die? Yeah, I mean, you just definitely have that moment because the first moment of just it's starting to fly and you're like, no, it's fine. And then, like, suddenly you're just kind of being tossed. You can't see. It's dark. I can taste, I can taste dirt in my mouth. I mean, there's people and, and, and feet tumbling. I mean, you just don't know where it's going to land and where it's going to end up. Um, I mean, so it's definitely a moment of, you know, maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. Um, when you, when you, got out of the train and climbed down off the top. What was the exchange between you and the other passengers? What were you saying and what were they saying? I mean, it, it, I mean, like, first it was kind of like everyone was trying to, like, figure out how to get out. Um, I mean, people were asking for help, I mean, to be pulled up because you had to actually climb out of the top. Um, and then it was people, like, asking to, like, I mean, to make the jump off the side of the train. I mean, that's, I mean, like, for example, like, I, I lost my shoes, so I have no shoe and you're jumping down. Um, some people are, are, I mean, I, I was lucky. Um, other people, I mean, they had um, injured arms or other things, and they, you know, it was, it was, it was much more of a physical task to get out. So, I mean, it, it, it was all kind of like shock, trying to figure out like what's the next step, um, where do we go next? Um, people just asking to call loved ones, anybody who has a phone, um, just trying to figure out, you know, where to go. And was your phone working yes. at the time? You were one of the lucky ones? Um, yeah, I luckily found my phone. I mean, there are some people who um, couldn't find their phones. I mean, like, for example, like, I couldn't find my, like, laptop and my money. Some people do have their bags. I mean, other people, I mean, it was just, um, I mean, the first thing, things, of course, is, like, you want to start to look for your belongings, but the car is there to, like, fill with smoke and, you know, you know, it's not worth it. Um, you don't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. so. And you, you said you've, you've ridden this train uh, before. What Describe it. Does it have a typical clientele? Is it business clientele at this hour? Um, yeah. I mean, like, there's definitely a lot of people who are just coming from, like, a business people. Uh, for, I mean, especially, like, on a Tuesday. It's primarily kind of a, a business crowd. People just kind of traveling for family. I mean, it, it, it totally varies. And, when, and were you placed on an ambulance to get to the hospital? Um, no, I was actually put into um, a police wagon. A police wagon, okay. And were, how, were, were there any other passengers with you? Um, yeah, there were about, um, like about eight other passengers. And what was their, what was their condition? Um, I, mean, I, I mean, the people who were put into the police wagon, I mean, we all had like pretty minor injuries, a few cuts, some blood, um, just like some bumps, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, the, the really injured people, I mean, there was a ton of ambulances taking people off in gurneys, and they went to different hospitals. So the people I was with was pretty minor. I mean, it's kind of funny. I mean, some people just want to call family members. Some people are just thinking about the logistics of, like, their next trip. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some people, like, because I, I come from a journalist background, like, I just wanted to record it. That was my first reaction. Um, I mean, other people, I mean, they just don't want to, you know, record this moment. They don't want to take selfies, um, and it, you know. Or, do, you, do you mind if I ask, because we don't know you, Beth, but how old are you? Mm -hmm. um, I'm 35 years old. And you're, you're a journalist for whom? Um, I work for a site called Billy Penn. It's a local um, news startup in Philadelphia. I mean, and... and so your information as a, I mean, your, your inclination as a journalist is to start to news gather, but I assume that you are, you have family. Yeah. And so have you spoken with your family? Or were you calling <laughs> yeah, them? Course. I mean, I'm sure they wanted to be reassured. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's obviously one of the first, um, I mean, one of the first things I did. I mean, I called, I mean, I, it, it's kind of a mix because like one, I mean, it's the reaction of like, you want to connect with your loved ones and let them know that you're okay. Um, but you also don't want to worry them like, hey, I was in a car, I mean, a train crash. Um, like, I don't want to worry my mom or dad, but, you know, just to let them know I'm okay. Um, and then at the same time, just kind of, like, working through, you know, some, like, logistics, like how, I mean, I work with people who live in Philly, like, where can I crash? Um, so, I mean, you see that kind of mix. And then there's also just kind of these moments where, like, there's other survivors, and it's just, like, you just want to, like, hug. I mean, just to be, like, you got out of this. Um, so, you, I mean, you, you, I, you, you must be feeling a bit of shock. I mean... You know, you were you were trying to take a train yeah. trip, and now you're in the hospital, having seen cars mangled and had dirt in your mouth as your train mm -hmm. 
toppled on its side in a mass casualty situation, a mass casualty plan situation, I want to say. Yeah, I mean, like, it's one of those things you just don't know. Um, you don't know quite how, how you're going to be feeling tomorrow. I mean, we were talking about this actually on the car. Like, you know, I still need to get back to New York. Um, to take, I mean, like, the, am I going to take a train? Um, you know, you're not quite sure if you're ready to do that again. Um, so, I mean, I mean, so, I mean, it's also like the initial, you were also the other survivors in the car. We were also discussing that, like, at first you just don't feel injured at all um, because you have the adrenaline. Uh, with minor injuries, obviously, it'd be different with other things. Right. But, but I mean, with a minor injury, you just don't feel it. And then, like, once the shot kind of wears out, I mean, you start to, you know, you, you start to feel it. I mean, like, I mean, the full impact of what this, you know, it's hard to understand right now. It's going to take a while to sink in. Beth, if, if you don't mind, I'd love to stand you by because I want to get live to our local um, reporter who's who apparently has some breaking news on the information. Um, but I do want to thank you for the information.